that we do research in the field of human health, which you have heard a lot about it, but also, especially in New Delhi, in our component in New Delhi, we deal with uh, biotechnology in agriculture, especially for the possibility of, def of developing new technologies for crop improvement to resist against biotic and abiotic stresses, uh, insect resistance, biopesticides, and so on and so forth. Now, when you deal with agricultural biotechnology, inevitably you have the issue and the problem of accepting or not accepting that technology. Whenever you talk about genetically modified organisms, uh, there is a lot of uh, concern in the public whether it is correct or not. This is another, is another issue, but it is a fact that you have this kind of concern. So uh, in, ICG, in ICGB, with the, uh, the, 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 all the different director generals which have been uh, heading the organization, it was decided that apart from the research and the training that we do in our, in our institutional uh, activities, we should also dedicate an effort to provide our member states with some activities that would be fully dedicated to this problem, but not in a way of promoting or uh, fighting against that technology. Uh, what we want to do is to provide governments, member states, the public at large, with all the necessary tools for those governments in particular to take decisions whether they want or they don't want to use those technologies and to have the capacity of uh, taking those decisions based on scientific and technologically correct information and not because they are influenced by commercial interests or by political influences by uh, environ environmentalists and, and so on. So we have developed, we have created within the SCGB this biosafety unit. I agree with Mauro that the term biosafety is not exactly ideal, also because it can be uh, a little bit misleading since uh, the concept of biosafety is also very much connected with the safety in the laboratories uh, whether you are uh, acting properly with your experiments and so on and so forth. But this is the, the term that is being used so much so that there is even an international uh, treaty which is called the Biosafety Protocol to the uh, Convention on Biological Diversity. So the, the term of biosafety has now become universally accepted and this is what we uh, basically uh, deal with. So the, this unit has been created in 1997 and the focus of it is, as we say in these slides, to disseminate as wide as possible information, but scientifically sound information related to the issues raised by the use of modern biotechnology in agriculture and to assist our member countries in their capacity to identify and regulate these uh, technologies for the introduction or a decision about their introduction within their own countries. Uh, the activities of the unit are uh, at several levels, but basically what we want to do is to ensure a proper dissemination of information and to provide our member states with a number of activities that are aimed at building capacities. Now, building capacities, the, the term capacity building means everything and nothing, uh, but if we want to really synthesize, is the, the possibility of training people, but at the same time to assist uh, institutions in order to take advantage of the people that have been trained. So, because to train somebody that goes back into a place where his or her capacities are not exploited is absolutely useless. So it's a matter of having the capacity building at the personal level, but also at the institutional level through local assistance. And this is what the unit does by a number of tools, which are basically, uh, first of all, they are informatic tools with a number of uh, activity, activities which are uh, uh, available through the web, uh, the ICGB web pages, in which we provide a number of information at the international level with 
all what is going on on this field, but also through specific tools that we have been created, maintained, and are uh, uh, being uh, uh, managed directly by the ICGB, the most important of which is the BiblioSafety, which is the most important bibliographic database existing freely on the web on all the articles which have been published on peer-reviewed journals since 1990 on the subject of the use of modern biotechnology in agriculture. And this uh, these, uh, bibliographic database is now becoming extremely popular to the point that uh, the uh, Secretariat of the Convention on Biological Diversity, which is the holder of the protocol on biosafety, the, the, the treaty I was mentioning before, has requested us to enter into a, an agreement for uh, establishing interoperability between their own site and our, uh, uh, and our database. And now this database uh, is averaging a hit of 8,000 per month of people which are interrogating the database in order to uh, uh, download scientific information through a system of classification that makes it very user-friendly and very easy to use by, uh, by the, the people who are, who are interested in this topic. Another tool that we have developed also in collaboration with the Italian Ministry for the Environment is the risk assessment searching mechanism where, whereby all the publications and scientific uh, assessment made on the use or the release of genetically modified organisms within the world are published and are accessible uh, without any interference and of course without any comment by your side. I mean what we are doing is to provide the information, we are not commenting whether that information uh, is questionable or not, but it is properly done by the relevant authorities within the countries that these uh, risk assessments have been done. Uh, and finally, we have a number of publications that we produce in-house, and the most important one is this biosafety reviews, whereby we ask uh, 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 scientists, which are known worldwide, to provide uh, original articles on specific topics that can be seen a little bit at the borderline between the scientific research and the issues connected with the use of agricultural biotechnology, especially from the socio-economic point of view. And this is also something that we have uh, developed together with the Italian Ministry for the Environment, which is providing us with some substantial funding for it. Uh, the second part of our activities are the training activities. And uh, in presenting the ICGB, Mauro mentioned that we have a number of courses that are organized every year. And in those courses which are organized every year, we have at least one course every year which is dedicated on biosafety of genetically modified organisms. Most of the time we provide uh, participants with practical cases of uh, submissions of applications made by uh, developers, by agricultural, by, by uh, companies that want to make uh, uh, a release of genetically modified organisms in the environment and we ask them to analyze that uh, application and to see what are all the elements that need to be considered before deciding whether that application should be approved or rejected and why those uh, elements need to be seen and if uh, it give the proper explanations for the decision which eventually will be taken. And so we have one course every year here in Trieste, but very often we also organize more than one course in our member states and we had recently in, in Kuwait, we organized uh, a course on this topic uh, which was uh, funded entirely by the government of Kuwait, but was organized by us. Then uh, we also host in the framework of the fellowship program that ICGB funds, we host uh, uh, occasionally some fellows which are incorporated 
within our activities and therefore thereafter go back to their country and normally they are coming from the regulatory authorities from those countries so we provide them a hands-on training on several activities connected with the issue of biosafety. Uh, finally, in assisting our governments in what they have to do in order to to fulfill their obligations at the national and international level. An example is what we did with the government of Italy, in which we uh, assisted the Ministry for the Environment in the construction of its own biosafety clearinghouse, which is uh, a demand made by the Protocol of Cartagena on biosafety and by the European Commission uh, through Directive 2001-18. Uh, which demands all uh, European countries to have uh, uh, an electronic database of whatever happens within the territory in terms of releases or control of the use of GMOs within the environment. Uh, finally, also we have supported the government of India in developing its own uh, law and its own uh, concept of high how they should uh, def define the air by laws for the use of GMOs within the country. Uh, Mauro was mentioning at the very beginning that uh, we have been able to attract uh, some substantial funding on the, uh, from the Bill and Melita Gates Foundation. I will fin fi finish my presentation by giving you a word about uh, providing you some words about, about this. Uh, I would like, though, to, to come first to one point, is the fact that by the activities that ICGB has been done during all these years, and its honesty, quote unquote, in the sense that uh, we really uh, had an approach that was never uh, against nor pro, but only scientifically based, we have been able to uh, be accepted, if uh, you allow me the word, by all parts of the, of the fight, both the industry, the environmentalists, uh, the governments, we are considered as honest brokers. And this has also had the uh, result that uh, donors, foundations like the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation have seen us as potential good partners for their own activities throughout the world. Uh, I would like to, to, to emphasize that the Gates Foundation is not like uh, many other foundations in which you send an application and then they evaluate it and they decide whether it is good or not. They approach you. Uh, they, they, they basically call on us and they said, well, we have seen what work you have done. We would like to collaborate with you. Make us a proposal for doing something uh, ac active within Africa. And this is what has happened. We have made this proposal to support the ongoing efforts in sub-Saharan Africa to develop effective safety and regulatory systems in the field of modern biotechnology. Now, I don't think there is any other product in industry that is regulated as tight as GMOs. There is none. Uh, and this has always been a major problem in terms of costs for the developers, in terms of non reaching the shelf of potential products that could have a big impact in these countries. And therefore, one of the aims is to use the knowledge, the capacity, the evaluation and the, uh, the, the experience that we have developed in a continent which is relatively uh, uncontaminated from that point of view and in a continent in which modern biotechnology could have a major impact in terms of alleviating problems like nutrition, like uh, uh, the, um, agriculture in, in very difficult conditions and so on. So the, the idea was through a scientific approach assist the governments to define a regulatory system because you need regulations, but a regulatory system that should be safe and effective and efficient without having a, a dispersion of money and ideas like it happens unfortunately very often in other countries. And uh, we had uh, this first phase of the project which 
uh, was developed in 2008, 2012, in which we received $3 million financing, which was distributed throughout the subcontinent, throughout sub-Saharan Africa. And then, because of the good results of this first phase, we have managed to obtain a second grant of over $6.3 million uh, for a second phase which was focalized on six countries that are considered as being those countries that have already either developed and commercialized GMOs like Burkina Faso, it's uh, apart from South Africa, it's the only other African country which has developed commercially a GMO, or other countries that are very much close to that, like Ghana, uh, Nigeria, Tanzania, and Uganda. Ethiopia is more of a political case, which was a little bit pushed to us by, by the Gates Foundation because of other, of other reasons, because they are very, very far away, and I don't think they're close to, to reach the, the, the commercial stage. Uh, how do we do that? We do that through a number of, prog uh, of activities, which I will not uh, be too, too, too long about. Uh, information is available on the website. But basically, we have developed a number of training activities, either through courses. We, we have organized, if I'm not mistaken, in the last couple of years, something like 12 courses throughout Africa, in which we teach every time from 30 to 40 people uh, all activities concerned to the risk assessment of GMOs, how to deal with GMOs, how to deal with these dossiers I was mentioning before. But in particular, what we have done is in collaboration with the University of Adelaide in Australia, we have developed a Master of Sciences, uh, a two-year course for obtaining a, a, a master's degree specifically focused on plant biotechnology and regulations, regulatory systems in biosafety. And we have now something like 25, if I'm not mistaken, young Africans which are finishing that course and which will go back eventually to their own uh, countries, to their own authorities, dealing with the regulation of GMOs. Plus, we have uh, entered into a number of agreements with the Office of the Gene Technology Regulator in Australia, which is the regulatory authority in Australia, for hands-on training of young regulators from Africa they can stay up to three months in Australia, staying side by side with their colleagues, Australian colleagues, and learning from the direct experience how to regulate these technologies. And uh, this morning, I had the very good news that we are finalizing a similar agreement with the, the Canadian Food and Inspection Agency so that we have also some fellows going to Canada for, for, that, for that purpose. So it's a, it's a multi-faceted program, but I think, and I come, why do I tell you all this apart from saying we are good, but it's also something that could be exported easily in other regions as an approach. And in many occasions, I had the opportunity to discuss with colleagues fro coming from the Gulf region because we do believe that this is something that could be of interest for the countries of the, re of the region in order to uh, use at, at the best possible, in the best possible way, those technologies that could have an impact, quite important impact for the agriculture of your regions, particularly given the difficulties in terms of uh, dryness and, 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 and uh, lack of water. So uh, I would just finish, well, this is another program that we have uh, obtained as a funding from the European Commission, which uh, uh, aims at divulgating as much as possible import, uh, information concerning about, uh, about uh, the, the use of GMOs and also about the possibility of finding alternative methods of animal feeding trials with using in vivo method instead of in vitro. And this is something that we were trying to to develop also in-house in collaboration with uh, Fabian Fergin, who I think will be speaking today or tomorrow. And uh, he's, he's dealing with the rating of uh, Drosophila. And we thought that something could be, do, could, could be done also in this field. Uh, just as a, the, final, the, final, the final slide is uh, just to say why we are uh, considered positively from the international point of view is also because we, we do go 
through a bottom-up approach that tries to identify the needs of our quote-unquote client, uh, we uh, dedicate ourselves and trying always to use an approach which is unbiased and transparent. We have been recognized internationally. We have very strong associations with other partners throughout the world. Uh, we try to work as much as possible in com complementary way with those other like-minded providers. And uh, on a final note also, we have good care of the funds which are provided by us because we think that one of the best way, but this is not only the biosafety unit, I think the whole of ICGB is to show to whoever gives us one dollar, is to show that that one dollar is properly spent and uh, we are quite able to de demonstrate that without any problem. So I thank you for, for, for your, for your patience. This is the, these are my colleagues that work together with me, uh, either in Cape Town, in Trieste, in New Delhi, and also in Rome. And we are quite scattered around the world, but uh, we are quite, quite a unit union. <laughs> so thank you for your attention, and uh, I hope I managed not to take too much of your time, and you have time for lunch <laughs> now.